teachers, Shikshako, it's a great pleasure to be uh, talking to you today. Let me start by uh, narrating to you two short stories. The first story is about uh, an American president called John F. John F. Kennedy. And Kennedy, after he became president of America, was determined to put an American on the moon. He gave a famous speech called, We Choose to Go to the Moon, at Rice University in September 1962. So the whole nation was gearing itself up how to beat the Russians to be the first to put a man on the moon. So one day Kennedy visited NASA, the, uh, the Space Commission of America. And as he was leaving in the evening, he saw a man sweeping the floor, a janitor. And he stopped by and shook hands with the janitor and asked him what he was doing. And the janitor said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. The other story is about a traveler who came upon three men working. They were all bricklayers. And he asked the first person, what are you doing? And the first man said, I'm laying bricks. The second man said, I'm building a wall. The third man said, I'm building a temple. They were all doing the same thing. The difference was, the first man had a job. The second man had a career. And the third man had a calling. So it is very important how you, as a teacher, view your work. Actually, it's very important to all of us. So as a teacher, do you see your role to teach rote-based content or to spark curiosity? Do you teach students to only compete and pass exams? Or do you teach to help create, create leaders and innovators? As a teacher, do you believe you have little impact on society? Or do you believe you're helping to transform your district, your state, or your country through the children you teach? So the question is, why do you teach? Is it a job? Yes, we all need an income, of course. Is it a career? Are you committed to it as a career? Or is it a calling? What do you stand for? Now, if you believe you have a calling to teach, if you see teaching as a cause, as a means to achieve a larger purpose, whatever that might be, that belief will give you more energy, passion, and commitment. That belief can help you become an extraordinary teacher. So, very, very important, critically important, how you view your work. So, there are two ways of being creative. You can sing and dance, or you can help singers and dancers to flourish. And by sing and dance, I mean literally sing, dance, but it also means playing a sport, being a mathematician, being a scientist, an entrepreneur, any skill. So you can sing and dance or you can help singers and dancers to flourish. The role of the teacher is more of the latter, the second part. That is helping singers and dancers to flourish. So ask yourself, Am I helping to create an environment where singers and dancers and future scientists and mathematicians and future teachers as well and doctors, you name it, can flourish? So how do you go about doing that? Well, based on the experience we've had over the last two decades in Augustia, we believe there are three key elements to creating a great environment a great learning experience which will allow children to flourish. First, 
a great learning environment means to us a caring environment, which means an environment without fear, where the teacher and students establish a deep connection, even a bond with one another. This means there must be trust, love, respect between the student and the teacher. This is the foundation of a great learning environment. There's no shortcut to it. So I remember we conduct these teacher training programs in our campus in Gurivanka, and I remember a teacher had come from Maharashtra, and I asked him, how was your experience here? And I thought he would say, I've really enjoyed the hands-on learning. I have learned new ways of teaching. I have learned new ways of communicating. And he had, he had. But what came to him at that moment was something else. He said, you know, Ramji, I've been teaching for 25 years in a government school in Maharashtra, teaching poor children. <clears throat> And I believe that these children, these poor children, were actually quite useless. They didn't have much potential. But I was doing my job anyway, because he viewed his job as a job. He said, the greatest learning I got from coming to the Augustia campus was seeing that the same kind of children from poor backgrounds, rural backgrounds, at your campus, was so different. They were inquisitive. They were showing creativity. They were innovating. They were laughing. They were fearless. So the learning for me was, hey, I had the wrong approach towards my students. I had no connection with them because I could see that students of the same background were so different on the campus. So that's the big learning for me, the importance of seeing my student as someone with a lot of potential, as someone with whom I need to form a connection, as someone that I must respect, trust, and show caring for. So, you know, that is really what creating a great environment is all about. The second element is the how of teaching. Do you want a lecture? Do you want students to be engaged in activities, in project-based learning, where they discuss, ask questions and reflect? Learning that is not passive, that is active, experiential. Methods that awaken curiosity, nurture creativity and innovation, and instill confidence in the child. So if you switch how you teach, how you learn in the classroom towards a more active, experiential way of learning and teaching, the teacher in effect becomes a gardener of fertile minds. And up jau de makon kimalik. In Telugu, I'm going to have a bash at it. Saravanta maina manasula totamali a gardener of fertile minds. Tending one day to a garden of curiosity in the classroom, another day a garden of creativity, yet another day a garden of innovation, and so on and so forth. The garden is the school. The bagicha is the school. The totem is the school. The soil is the child's mind. The minerals and organic material in the soil our curiosity, imagination, things like that. The flowers and plants are expressions of the child's creativity, innovation, and excellence in general. Sunshine and rain are the resources, both external and internal, that the teacher harnesses and makes available for learning by the student. So that's the second element, which is the how of teaching, making learning come alive in the classroom through an experiential participative methodology. The third is the what or the content. 
and I won't speak much about it, except to say that I'm pleased to read that the new national education policy uh, is really talking about substantially reducing the physical load that a child has to carry in terms of books and all the rest of it, the content. We've been cramming our children with too much content. You know, in fact, when we started Augustia in the early days, we had a brainstorming and one of the participants was a gentleman called Prasad, who was principal of the Daily College, a famous college that produced people like the great cricketer Hanuman Singh, Raj Singh Durgapur and people like that in Indore in Madhya Pradesh. And I was telling Prasad, isn't the content, isn't the syllabus too much in Indian schools? And he said, look, maybe it is, but the issue isn't one of syllabus. The issue is about how you bring the syllabus alive in the classroom. That is really the key. So with the National Education Policy 2020, the biggest challenge is going to be how to bring the content alive in the classroom through more innovative, creative, engaging ways of teaching and learning. How to build that trust, respect between the teacher and the child. And for each teacher, the challenge about how to view your own job. Do you see it as a job, as I said earlier, as a career? or at the highest level as a calling, a larger purpose. The NEP 2020 talks about a shift from passive road-based learning to active experiential learning. Learning that awakens curiosity, imagination, the creativity of children. A shift from what to think to how to think. That is fundamental. That's a major shift that you, the teacher, if you like, the builder of temples has to make. I have no doubt that you're well on your way to doing it. And of course, I hardly need add that Augustia is here to support you in any way we can and to learn from your own experiences. So I wish you all the very best and hope you spend some time reflecting this evening on all the uh, talks by people as well as perhaps your own inputs to the discussion. Thank you very much and all the very best.